Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and in uh, today's video, we are going to go over a little bit more uh, teaser material from my upcoming T SQL course. Uh, that T that SQL course is available to purchase at the pre sale price of $250. Once the pre sale is over, once all the content is uh, published, it will be going up to $500. And this is, uh, as I've said before, uh, sort of companion material to the T SQL pre cons that Kendra Little and I will be teaching at Past Data Community Summit this November. And and uh, if you attend those pre-cons, you will, of course, get access to the companion material as part of your admission there. Otherwise, uh, you, do, you, you, you should buy it in order to get to it. Um, I've had some interesting questions about this, like, I bought your other material. Can I get free access to this? The answer is no. Think about it like this. Your favorite author writes a book. You buy it. You read it. You like it. Your favorite author writes a new book. You knock on your favorite author's door and say, hey, I bought your first book. Give me your second book for free. It's not the way it works. Things are big investments of time and money. Right? I do have these things. I do pay uh, people to tech review my material so that I, I, I make sure there's a second set of eyes on it so that I'm not doing or saying anything too stupid. So, uh, no, you can't have it for free. Thank you for buying the first thing, though. Thank you for purchasing my first book. Anyway, uh, this video is about inner joins versus outer joins and how filtering logic works between them. Because uh, I do run into a lot of SQL developers who have uh, big questions and big feelings and uh, a lot of confusion around this. And I, you know, I just assume that they learned about joins from someone who uses Venn diagrams to explain joins. And of course, people who, the Venn diagram of, of people who understand joins, that's a circle over here. And, the, and then the people who use Venn diagrams to explain joins are over here. And there is actually a, a cosmic field between the two where they cannot touch. So if you run into someone trying to explain joins to you with Venn diagrams, right, that, uh, just understand that they don't understand joins. So skip that. Uh, so what I have here is a query, as we are off, as we often as we are often faced with. It's a query, and this query does the following: uh, we take the users table, and because we have not specified uh, an outer join, SQL Server, we can just say join, and SQL Server defaults to inner join here, and we're joining those two tables together on the owner user ID column and the post table being equal to the ID column in the users table. Uh, for the purposes of this query. We only care about users with a reputation of one, and we only care about posts with a score that is not equal to zero. Maybe we're like, well, I don't want to sum up a bunch of zeros. What's the point? Uh, zero summed up is still zero. Know. Who knows why? But just stick with me on this one. If we run this query, and we, uh, and you don't have to be an execution plan wizard to understand this. Um, I'm going to show you all the important parts. But if we look, start by looking at the results, and what we're going to notice here is that everyone has a total posts of at least one. Right? If we scroll down through this, like just do a quick eyeball scroll, nothing in here is going to be zero. And all of the total scores are going to have a number. Right? Whether it's a negative number or a positive number, we still have a number. Now, one, one thing that I do get a lot of questions about is if I'm using an inner join, does it matter if I put uh, predicates in the join clause or in, the, uh, uh, or in the where clause, right? Because we do have two separate things here. We have a join clause, and we can add conditions to this. And then we have a where clause that we have a couple, couple conditions in. So if we run this query, and what I've done in this query, but before I highlight it and make everything all ugly, uh, let's just look here real quick and see that this is still between users and posts. We're still joining on owner user ID equals ID. But now we, we have no where clause. We just have an extended uh, join on clause where we've included our other filters in here. But because this query, because this is an inner join, it, this query is identical to this query, right? So if we look at the execution plan for the first one, you're going to see uh, an inner join here. The details of the other stuff around it don't matter. This is the important stuff. And we'll see that it returned 34,335 rows here. Uh, if we look at the uh, scan of the post table, uh, we see score not equal to zero. And if we look at the clustered index scan of the users table, we see reputation equals one. Now, for the second query that is uh, that I'm 
promise you is logically and semantically the exact same. Uh, we are going to see the same thing in the results, right? Everyone's going to have a total posts of at least one, some more, and everyone's going to have a total score that is a non-null entry in here, right? It's all, everything has a number. Now, the query plan for this is going to be uh, fundament fundamentally identical to the one we just looked at. We still have an inner join. We still produce 34,335 rows. And if we look at the scan of the post table, we still filter out where score is not equal to zero. And if we look at the scan of the users table, we still have where reputation equals one. So these two queries are, for all intents and purposes, interchangeable. Right? The filtering between the inner join and the where clause, it's all done in the same way. That does change if you start using left joins or outer joins. Uh, in this case, we're using a left join because, let's face it, um, very few people actually write right joins out. Right? It's not a terribly common thing to see in the world. Um, if, if you've gotten to the point in your gigantic 50 page long query where you're now just tacking on right joins instead of left joins, you've, you've, you've gone too far. You have, you have reached the end of the internet. But uh, let's just say that, you know, we, I don't know, we, we were running this query up here, this first one, and we were like, oh, it's all screwed up. Something's not right. Change it to a left join. It's not giving us what we want back. So what, what we just did here is really just added in the word left. We didn't do much else here. Not a lot of fireworks. Uh, this query is the same, except for the, the word left in it. The thing is, if we run this query, and we start eyeballing the results, they're going to be the exact same as the first two queries that we ran. When we look at the total post column, everything in here is at least one. If you look at the total score column, everything in here is a number. We don't have any nulls. What we were expecting to see is wrote people from the users table who hadn't posted anything because right? that's, that's what a, the purpose of a left join here would be. We want to keep users who haven't posted anything. That's why we're left joining to post. The idea here is that uh, we don't care if a user has, has posted anything. We only care that their reputation is equal to one. But if they did post something, that score better not be zero. Right? So that's what we're looking for, but that's not what we're getting. And if we look at the execution plan for this, shockingly, SQL Server has gone behind our back and said, you didn't write a left join. You, you wrote an inner join. Uh, that whole thing, looking for a score not equal to zero, guess what? That, mean, that means we can't have nulls. We can't have nulls in our results. And the users table still ends up producing those 34,335 rows, which is, which is what comes out of here. Right, because like we, we, we have a bunch of rows that come out of posts and we have this many rows that come out of users, but this is this is this is all that matches, right? This is this is what we get. Even though there are are about a million people with a reputation of one in the users table, we're 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 losing a bunch of them because of what because we're restricting nulls when we get data from the post table, and 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 that that shows here with score not equal to zero, and that shows here uh, when we look for users with with a reputation of one. So some, something here has gone wrong. Now, there are a couple different ways to do this, but probably the simplest way uh, is to change the query so that when we run this, we put the score not equal to zero as part of the left join clause. Now, you could change the where clause up there to say where score is not equal to zero or score is null. Well, that had, as far as I know, that would work. Or you can put join or you can put and join on the same, same column to column condition and where p dot score is not equal to zero. So now what we're effectively saying is what we meant to say in that first query, you're in the users table, you have a reputation of one. I don't, if, I don't care whether or not you posted anything. All I care about is that if you posted something, it doesn't have a score equal to zero. So if we run this, it just takes a couple of seconds more to finish because it returns a lot more rows. And we, and we look at the results, we're going to see some different stuff here now. Like just we're going to eyeball the, the total post column first like we've done before. 
And now at some point, we start hitting all these zeros, probably at just about row 34,336, the zeros kick in. And we'll also, we're also starting to see a bunch of total scores that, that equal null. And the reason for that is because, you know, we, we're, we're counting nothing from here, right? Like, like, there's no row in the post table. We count zero. And if there's nothing, to, there's no score to sum in the post table, then this returns zero. No, sorry, this returns null. So we get a bunch of nulls back for sum, we get a bunch of zeros back for count. This does actually give us the correct results. What's cool though, is if we look at the execution plan for it, there are two things that I think are interesting. One, for all the smack talk I just did on, no one actually writes right joins, uh, SQL Server went behind our back and, and did, did produce this as a, a right outer join. Right, the, right outer join, you can see it. But the, the, this, the, the order of the tables in the query plan where posts, uh, ah, my hand got cut off, where post is on the outer part of the join, right? That's that upper part that, that my hand is vaguely pointing in the direction of. And the users table is on the inner side of the join. Uh, the right outer, like if it, were, if it were a left join, the tables would be flipped. So with the, with the right outer join, that is the correct table order to preserve nulls from the users table, uh, which is what we've done. Right? We, still, we still have a predicate over here. We're still like, hey, if you posted anything, the score can't be zero. And, the th and over here, we're still saying, if you're a user, your reputation better be one. Those are still the rows that make it to the join. Right? Score not equal to zero still makes it to the join. User, equal, user reputation equals one still makes it to the join. The difference is that now we actually get the results we want back, where if you haven't posted anything, you still show up. The where clause is no longer restricting you, no longer restricting those rows from passing. That's why this is no longer um, converted by the optimizer to an inner join. It stays an outer join because we've written our query in a way that preserves nulls from the users table, not restricting them from the results. This does come back a bit to the sort of um, logical query processing stuff that we've talked about a few, through a few different videos, where the join on conditions and how rows are preserved for full and outer joins here, and how the where clause conditions are where row level, row level filters are applied. Filtering out rows where score is not equal to zero in the where clause means all those nulls disappear that we saw in the results that we, just, we were just looking at. The from clause, is a little bit like saying you've made it on the team. I'm partial to baseball, so let's just say you know the from if you if the from clause is you know you got drafted, uh, you get a uniform and a glove and a bat and a bag of sunflower seeds that you get to spit and be gross and chew nine innings a day. But the where clause actually means you get to go out on the field and play, right? This is the result. The where clause means if you pass the where clause, that means you get returned out there. The from clause means you just pass the join, the join operator in the query plan. So whenever you're writing outer joins, <clears throat> if you find yourself getting to the where clause and you find yourself looking at columns that are in the table that you're left joining to and thinking, I need to, I need to filter out some rows from there, be real careful how you do it because you might just be turning your outer join to an inner join without knowing it. This is why I encourage everyone to actually look at query execution plans, regardless of whether they're having a performance problem or not, because you can catch things like this. See, like the optim again, the optimizer changed that outer join to an inner join. There was no warning, right? There was no like big flashing light or siren or anything that said, ah, oh, this is an inner join now. No, it didn't happen. That's why I encourage people to consistently be looking at query execution plans so that when uh, things like this happen, or maybe some query logic goes wrong, you can catch it before you start returning incorrect results to people. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And I will hope that you will take advantage of this magnificent pre-sale deal uh, before the, the price magically goes up to $500 one day from $250 because boy, oh boy, you'll be, you'll be emailing me asking for more free stuff. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video where we'll talk about some more of this course content. It'll be, be a grand old time. Anyway, goodbye.